Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I'll start a new series on narratology. Okay, and the reason I am starting it is, of course, a friend requested it, but also I myself uh, am not really familiar with narratology and narrative theory, so I thought if I prepare for these lectures, I will learn something new and then I'll be able to share something new as well. So today, in today's video, I will briefly be introducing what narratology is, how can it be defined, and then eventually in further videos, I will share with you works of different structuralist theorists and others who have tried to define narratology and its practice. Now, to be clear, this is the book and I'll post the link uh, in the description that I'm using as a guide to learn the basic concept of concepts of narratology and narrative theory. And then, of course, I've already read so many of the scholars that they use here, but, you know, to articulate what exactly certain things mean within narratology, this is the book I'll be using. I highly recommend it. The book comes with a very extensive introduction that gives you the idea, the history, and the description of narratology itself. And then it gives you different chapters, which are actually excerpts from major theorists and writers who have worked on narrative theory or narratology. So here, let's start with how the editors define it, what are their reasons, and what do we get out of that right now. Here are some basics about narratology. First of all, it's very succinct definition, right, which the editors provide us in the book that I mentioned and that I'll cite at the end of this, right? And that is that etymologically speaking, narratology is the science of narrative, which originally the structuralist theorists came up with and we'll talk more about those. It has a wider and a narrower definition. The wider comes from Aristotle, which is a work with a plot, and a narrower is a work with a narrator. We work with the second one in literary studies. And then today, it studies narrative aspects of many genres, literary genres, lyrical poems, films, drama, history, and even advertisements. And narratology covers pretty much all these fields. So there is narrative as a mediated enunciation, and there is a distinction between dramatic narrative and mediated narrative that we'll talk about because the latter has a narrator. And then narrative itself is the semiotic representation of a series of events meaningfully connected in a temporal and causal way. That is how the editors, whose book is right in front of you, define narrative because to know narratology, we have to know what a narrative is. Okay, so in terms of the definition that it is an etymologically speaking, it is a science of study of narratives. So you already probably know what etymology is. It is the study of history of the words, but here we could basically assume that what they mean is that in terms of its linguistic historical designation, narratology means study, scientific study of narratives. Then they go on to teach us in this introductory chapter that the people who came up with a theorization of this were early stru structuralists, uh, people like Gerard Genet, Mike Ball, Gerard Prince, and I would say, of course, Barth as well. And, uh, as a result, the early understanding of narratology was from a structuralist point of view. And, you know, if you don't know what structuralism is, you can watch my lecture on structuralism, but basically structuralism is study of literary structures, which is adapted into literary studies after the linguistic turn, after Saussurean linguistic becomes prominent. Now, the editors here, what they have done is they are first in the introduction, they are defining their terms, so as they just defined what narratology is. Then they go on to teach us that there are two ways of looking at narratology. We can have a wider definition, 
and then we can have a narrower definition. The wider definition they are drawing from, you know, Aristotle's poetics, right? And in that, for Aristotle, and they say, and I'm quoting, plot is the central element in a literary work, a narrative structure which is common to dramatic narratives genre proper, right? So if we go with a wider, right, definition of uh, narratology or narratives, anything that has a plot, right, according to the editors, is a narrative. The narrower version that they are talking about is, is it's, it's a story, it's, it's a narrative, you know, not just a plot, but a work with a narrator, right? And that's crucial because then we are into literary studies and then we can decide, okay, if this thing doesn't have a narrator, is it a narrative or not? But the wider one is anything that has a plot and the narrower one is a plot with a narrator. And then they go into narrative as a mediated enunciation. What do they mean by it, simply? So enunciation is an act of speaking. By mediated enunciation, they mean is that any work that has someone, a narrator, who is enunciating what's happening in the plot, so hence has a narrator. So by that definition, things that don't have that mediation through a narrator or through something that enunciates the reality to us that cannot be probably studied as a narrative. Let's give you an example. They give you the example of drama as unmediated, right? And then um, all the other forms, you know, that, is, that are non-dramatic, but let's say fiction, you know, as, as a mediated form. So the difference is drama, when they talk about it, basically you're talking about live stage play, in which the play is right there, the players speak, the actors speak, and you are the one who receive it. And it's unmediated because no one is trying to tell you what to construe whose point of view is it, right? You're just watching it. Mediated enunciation is when there is a figure of a narrator, right? Or if it's film, there are camera angles. There is a director, right, who's... Another aspect of it is that the drama, uh, an unmediated representation can constantly change. Anytime a drama is staged by different actors, by different directors, it can have different emphasis, different meanings as, as a narrative structure. But if it has been rendered into a film, it becomes a fixed narrative, right? And hence, we can study it. But this is their reason for explaining the mediated and unmediated uh, enunciations, right? And it will become important, you know, as we study more of narratology and narrative analysis. Then we go out to, you know, I'm not going to rely more on their further description, but I am going to go to how they define the narrative. So as I put it in the slides, a narrative is the semiotic representation of a series of events meaningfully connected in a temporal and causal way. So let's unpack that, right? First of all, it's a semiotic representation which means, what is a semiotic? A representation in signs, right? In verbal signs, in written signs. So it's a semiotic representation of something, right? A series of events which are intentionally and meaningfully connected to one another, right? And they are connected to one another in time, in serial time, and there are causal connections from one to the other, right? And that constitutes a narrative. Now, it can be a novel, it can be a film, right? Uh, it can be, you know, a linguistic narrative, it can be a theatrical narrative, a pictorial narrative, a filmic narrative, but all of those 
to constitute a narrative will have what they suggest a semiotic representation of a series of events meaningfully connected together, right? Meaningfully in time and through some kind of causality, right? And uh, then they will go into explaining each of these aspects of it, you know, what is the relevance, what is the aspects of uh, what represented object, what is the criteria of relevance between one object or the other. But at this point, since this is just the very beginning of it, what we understand by narrative is simply that it's a semiotic representation of a series of events meaningfully connected in a temporal and causal way. Now, the reason it's important to understand that is, just like any other scholars, these people are first trying to ground us into understanding what their understanding of narrative is. Then they will expand it, add different layers to it, right? And then it will become easier for us to understand what narrative theory is. Why do structuralists do the things they do? If we don't know what a narrative is and how to define it clearly, then we won't understand what different structuralist theorists or anyone else, feminists and others, are doing with narrative. So. That's all I have today, so let's kind of go over it. You know, the editor first gave us that narratology is the science of studying narrative. Okay, there are wider narratives as defined by Aristotle, which is that anything with a plot is a narrative, and then there are there is a narrower definition, and that is of narratology, and that is studying anything that has a narrator. Right? That is crucial to us because we study literature. But by declaring that it must have a narrator, we are also eliminating certain things that might not have a narrator. And stage play, let's say, is one of them. Right? And then they go into that mediated and unmediated, enunci mediated enunciation. So a live stage play becomes an unmediated enunciation, hence may not qualify as a narrative for study, whereas a novel, a short story, even a narrative poem is mediated through the point of view of the narrator, right? Hence, might constitute a narrative worthy of our study. And then they give us a clear definition of narrative that I repeated several times earlier. Keeping these things in mind, right, when I come to you next time, we will go as to how the editors of this particular book further complicate narratology as a science of study of narratives and why it is important for us to learn as literary critics, as critics of texts and works. That's all I have today. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If I missed something, let me know and I'll try to explain it better. And then I'll be back with the next lecture on narratology or narrative criticism. That's all. Thank you. And as always, peace and love.